throughout a lot of my writing, I felt like I had to fake it till I make it. What does it mean, fake it till you make it? It's not faking it that you're trying to deceive others. It's faking it to deceive yourself. I started writing in 2004. I just finished my graduate degree. I was teaching at the University of Colorado in Denver, and I was kind of getting bored a little bit. And I read the Street of Commas looking for writers. And the good thing, they were not paying anything. And so <laughs> I didn't feel the pressure to be good. So I started writing for the street.com. And at first, my writing was incredibly boring because I was so self-conscious. I was so worried about getting every comma, every, every period right. And then something used to happen. I called my Tiva story. Okay, and this is probably one of those little experiences that, because I observed it, has changed the way I write. This is 2005. My son Jonah at the time was four years old. I had to call this company. I had Tiva. I had to call Tiva to get technical support. This is a long time ago, and the at the time voice recognition system was not very good. Also, as you can tell, I have an accent. So when I talk to this answering machine, and I'm trying to say, "Please get me an operator" or whatever. It, doesn't really ask me to explain what my problem is. I was speaking to the phone, it would not understand me. My four-year-old son Jonah playing on the floor of the truck. I gave him the phone and Jonah has this beautiful, absolutely beautiful Disney accent. So imagine this, uh, Jonah has the phone, I tell him what to say into the phone, he says that, and the computer system recognizes his voice. So anyway, I just, that's the whole story. So that was the whole article. I don't know, 300 words, 500 words. That's the whole article. I got more emails in response to this article than uh, two of my articles combined. Just one, this little silly article. And this is when I realized it's okay to be human. It's, it's okay to be authentic. It's okay to be myself and, as I write. And little by little, my writing got looser. I became a little bit self-conscious. And... I just started to tell more stories. I think anybody who has you know, created anything always experienced this in imposter syndrome. Okay, so throughout a lot of my writing, I kind of I felt like I had to fake it till I make it. And people are like, what does it mean, fake it till you make it? It's not faking it that you're trying to deceive others. It's faking it to deceive yourself. It's faking it to basically your for you to overcome that imposter syndrome. For you to improve, you always have to stretch what you're doing. You always have to do, you know, kind of going outside of comfort zone. If you go outside of comfort zone, you, f you don't feel the security. You, don't, you, you, feel, you, help, you feel the discomfort. You feel like an imposter. This is when fake it till you make it come, you know, comes in. And make it in this, in this part is that when you get to the point when you feel secure. You know, when you feel like you deserve to be there. So I'll give you a uh, interesting story. So I started writing in 2004. Then six months later, or eight months later, I have the audacity to contact Financial Times to see if I can write for them. Remember, just six months before, I did not write at all. And I contact the Financial Times. I send them, send them some of my samples from the street.com. And they say, okay. So I started writing for Financial Times. A year later, I feel like, okay, well, I'm already writing for Financial Times. I should probably should write a book. And I took, so in a, when I wrote an article for, for Financial Times, I had this kernel of, of an idea there about sideways markets. So I contacted uh, John Wiley and Sons, and I said, I have this idea. I want to write about this. So they asked me to send them a sample of my writing. I did. They said, sure, let's, let's do a book. I, I've been writing for a year, year and a half, and now... I have this book with Wiley. Again, just, you know, I have this enormous imposter syndrome again. And then I, you know, I ended up writing two more books after that. Anything you do creatively, you always gonna, if you don't feel the discomfort of when you do something, it means you're not, you're not doing anything new. You're not pushing yourself enough. So imposter syndrome is a absolutely normal part of doing anything creative. That's, that's how I started writing.